I consider myself a technology enthusiast, and as such, I cannot have a cheap Netgear wireless router serving internet at my home. A while ago, I had my first encounter with an enterprise-grade access point, and back then I made my mind that someday I will ditch the consumer-grade appliances and go full ubiquity. And so I got another Unify APAC light to serve wireless signal in the living room area of my apartment and a router Edge X to handle the routing duties. Edge Router X is the entry router in Ubiquiti Network's catalog. It's very small, so you shouldn't have a problem finding a place for it. It can be powered with the enclosed 12 volts power adapter, or through the magic of PoE using a PoE-enabled appliance, or a PoE injector, such as one of those found in the box with the UAPAC light. The Edge Router X features 5 LAN ports, one of which serves as the WAN port, while the rest can be used as switching ports. The one on the far right is the PoE pass-through out, which means that it can be used to power a PoE device such as one of those Unify access points. Note that to ensure proper operation of the PoE-powered device, Edge router must be powered either using a 24 volt power adapter or a 24 volt passive PoE injector. Otherwise, you'll most probably experience some stability issues with your PoE-powered appliance. The plan is to use that output to power the access point in the bedroom section of my apartment. To set up the router, plug in a LAN cable to the ET80 port and connect it to your computer. Plug in the power supply, wait a while for the router to boot up, and navigate your browser to 192.168.1.1 IP address. Log in using default user credentials UBNT UBNT. Go to Wizards tab and select the 1 plus 2 LAN 2 option. Leave the DHCP option enabled if you have an IP address automatically assigned by your internet service provider or choose the static IP option if you have a static IP address. I left the one LAN checkbox selected as I want the rest of the LAN ports to act as a switch ports on the same network. Provide the IP address of your internal network Click apply and confirm changes. While the router reboots Connect your computer to the second LAN port and change the IP address to one that matches the new IP addressing scheme. If you're a power user, it might be that you had some port forwarding rules set on your old router. If so, log in to the router GUI once more. And switch to the firewall slash NAT tab. Add your port forwarding rules, click add LAN and select switch 0 from the drop-down list. That last step is essential, and coming to that conclusion took me a while and was quite frustrating. The last thing left to do was enabling the PoE pass-through on the ETA0 LAN port, where the bedroom's access point is connected. While the first Unify controller is mounted on the ceiling, there was no chance of that happening in my living room. Hence, I decided to wall mount it behind the TV. Installation is pretty easy. Take the mounting plate, put it against the wall, and mark drilling points. Drill the holes, and screw the plate to the wall. Next, remove the small plug to free the path for the network cable, connect the router, put it against the wall, and lock it in place. That cable connects to the PoE port on the PoE injector, and the other one runs through the inwheel tunnel to the router, which lives in my entertainment center cabinet. No worries, the cabinet is ventilated, and the ventilation cutouts are big enough to fit a 14 cm fans if need be. Configuring the access point is pretty easy. Log into the Unify controller interface and click Devices to access the list of compatible devices. You should see another appliance awaiting adoption. Click the Adapt icon and wait for the controller to process your request. Next, you can put the other access point on your map and move on to configuring its radio interface. Now, I kinda wish the controller would have copied all parameters from another device on the network, but it's not the case. The two Unify access points are connected to ETH1 and ETH4 ports, and the other two linked to two switches. One in my office and the other one in the living room. When it comes to performance of a wall-mounted access point, the signal coverage isn't ideal compared to the ceiling-mounted one, but it's more than okay given that it only serves Wi-Fi in the living room area. 
Switching between two access points isn't as seamless as I thought it would be, but nevertheless I like the fact that all my gear is hidden away so my cat isn't showing on the antennas. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.